Ah, welcome. Welcome to the 2021 Graduate Diploma Ceremony for Woods College. I'm Karen Muncaster. I'm the Dean of the College, and I am so excited that you're here today. It's really nice seeing you in person. I had talked to some of the folks and said, maybe we should get everybody little rectangles they could put around their faces so they'd look just like they do on Zoom. I got voted down again. Um, I have a few housekeeping announcements for you before we begin. Please note that because of the state and local regulations that still govern us, we have a few rules that I have to ask you to comply with. Uh, except if you're up here speaking, please keep your mask on at all times. Please don't move the chairs. We've gotten them to be their appropriate distance apart to keep you safe. Please remain in your seat for the duration of the ceremony. We'll give you directions on when graduates need to move and when guests need to move. And I'm very sorry to say, relatives, please do not come up to the podium for photos. We're supposed to ask you to keep back. You are welcome after the ceremony to come up and take photos with your graduate uh, with the backdrop behind. And our photographer will be taking a photo of every graduate at that backdrop. Okay, we've got so much to celebrate today. Being together to share the day is something I never thought we would see this year. And that alone is something to celebrate. But we're focused on celebrating the fact you've completed your master's degree despite all the challenges you faced. Remember way back in 2019 when you know finding a parking spot on a rainy night was the biggest impediment to class participation? It's been a little different in 2020 and 2021. So how many people have had malfunctioning technology? No? Well, that's not bad. Um, how about Zoom meetings at work that ran late and interfered with your class meetings? Children who were on your computer at class time or um, absolutely needed something from that shelf right behind you, right in the middle of a Zoom session with your faculty, or maybe we're downloading a really heavy duty game right when you were trying to do an exam. Um, and then there are of course the puppies that needed to go out uh, at inopportune times and the cats who always position themselves in interesting ways in front of cameras. But that said, you did it and you're here and we're here to celebrate your accomplishment. Like everything else this year, this celebration and ceremony is different from anything we've ever done at Boston College. We have our space limits, we have speaker limits, and we have time limits. We're supposed to be like eating dinner out at 90 minutes, we're supposed to be done in 90 minutes. So one thing I've learned this year is that limits inspire creativity. My sincere hope is that the creativity we use to create this ceremony for you today reflects the joy we feel for you and the admiration we feel when we reflect upon your success. All right, because we're gonna be keeping this to 90 minutes, there may be a few moments that may feel a little rushed or may seem like we don't exactly know what we're doing, which might be true. Um, but our goal is to make sure that each graduate is acknowledged each graduate hears their name called, and each graduate walks across this small stage and has their photo taken so that each of you can celebrate your amazing accomplishments. So, to start the more formal part of our ceremony, I would like to ask Father Maurice Abai to deliver, oh, there he is, our invocation. Thank you, Father Maurice. Gracious and loving God, we've come to the end of this academic year and we celebrate this commencement with deep gratitude for your blessings upon us here at Woods College. At no point in recent times have I resolved as administration, faculty, and students been so much tried and tested as it has been during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. And yet, as one academic family, we've supported each other making it possible for us to celebrate our new graduates today. 
today's graduation is a light in an otherwise difficult year. As we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost today as well, we implore you, Holy Spirit, to pour on our graduates the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of courage, courage to face the many challenges, marking a world in recovery from a global pandemic. Courage as an antidote to fear. Courage in ushering a new beginning for a world in need of renewal. May our graduates ride off, not into sunset, but into sunrise, the sunrise of hope. May they never forget the noble charism of Woods and of Boston College as a whole, that is, to become every day women and men for others in an imperfect world full of people who want to do better. We thank you for the support that our graduates received from their families while studying at Woods College. We implore you to pour on the families of our graduates the spirit of peace, of joy, and of comfort. May your blessings continue to be with Woods College now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Father Maurice. So, graduates, you're now, oops, there we go, that's better. You're now preparing to join a network of over 188,000 Boston College alumni. And it is the most amazing alumni base I have ever met in my many years in higher education. I too have graduated from Boston College um, and am very proud to, to be an Eagle alum. Um, the alums are so illustrious from this school. We have politicians and public servants like Karen Polito, our Lieutenant Governor, John Kerry, Ed Markey, and of course Woods College own Marty Walsh, who's now in, in serving at the federal level. There are a variety of business leaders, the chair and CEO of State Street, the CEO of Liberty Mutual, the president and CEO of CVS Health, President, CEO, and co-owner of the <clears throat> New York Giants, um, the president and CEO of the Campbell Soup Company. There are college presidents, there are writers, actors, scientists, whose names are very well known and respected. And in a few years, we'll be talking about some of the amazing contributors to society who graduated in 2021. People like Carrie Casey, Angelo Bruno, Catherine Bauer, and Gary Kakassi. I expect to see you written about as examples of alumni who have made a name for yourself in your chosen field. This year, you have certainly proven that you have grit, resilience, and flexibility, as well as intellectual ability and mastery of a body of knowledge. You are the students who succeeded in spite of, or perhaps because of, the pandemic. This year brought opportunities, and obstacles. It was pretty easy to be discouraged by the obstacles, but you all persevered through them. You learned more about your chosen discipline and hopefully more about yourself. 
and I encourage you to continue to be patient and persistent as you keep moving past those articles, obstacles, and take advantage of the opportunities that life offers. You've already demonstrated that you've been able to do it so far. Continue it. I hope you stay open to what is possible and remain diligent in the pursuit of not just your personal success, but success about the pursuit of a better world, serving others and fighting for justice. With what you've learned in your graduate programs, you have the skills and knowledge to use your education to make a positive change in the world. And this world needs your energy, your intellect, and your ability to persevere, as well as your empathy and your compassion. You have the ability to stand for, to fight for, and to vote for a better society for yourselves and your children. So please, I ask you, use your education to move us toward a more just and healthier society. So I'm going to move from being completely serious, sorry, but I always include words of wisdom from my mother when I speak at commencement. So my mom really wanted to go to college, but she graduated from high school during the Great Depression in the 30s. And they didn't have money for rent, no less for tuition. My mother was well-read and my mother was wise. And so I'm gonna leave you some, with some thoughts from Marie Muncaster, who would be so incredibly proud to see her daughter here today. One, it doesn't cost anything to smile. We need more joy, as Father Maurice was saying. You know, it doesn't hurt to smile, and smiles are contagious. My mother's personal favorite was remember who the grown-up is. When you're in contentious situations, when you're dealing with people who won't back down, who are being unprofessional or disrespectful, you be the one who rises above that. You have the ability. Use it. Um, my mother also said always wear clean underwear. She meant that literally. I've always taken it to be, be prepared. Think through what's going to happen. Do your best to be prepared so you can react from a base of knowledge. Wash your hands, which certainly came in handy this year. And the other one that I think is so important is say thank you. So my mother always wanted a uh, handwritten stationery and if you haven't ever written a thank you note in this digital age, I would tell you they are so meaningful. If you, I was talking to somebody who was doing some job interviewing, writing a handwritten thank you note for an interview as somebody who interviews a lot of uh, candidates is a really impactful thing to do. Saying thank you can actually make you feel better, feel a little more virtuous, kind of a feel good state. And by taking the time to focus not on yourself, but on someone else, it leaves your thankee feeling valued, maybe with a better self-worth themselves, and makes them a little more willing to help you. There, I just read some research, um, because it is a graduation, a new perspective on the social functions of emotions, gratitude and the witnessing effect. And what these researchers found was that not only expressing gratitude makes a difference and makes people feel better and more tightly connected and more willing to help and collaborate. People around them who see it also benefit. So it's like, you know, when you go through the toll plaza, when it used to be you'd have money to go through the toll plaza and you'd pay for the person behind you, it's like paying it forward. Showing gratitude in public rubs off and has a positive impact on everyone. It can help build relationships within a social work, within a social network directly and simultaneously. So it's really useful in your workplace as well as in your personal space. So because I think thank you is so important, graduates, would you please stand for one moment? Turn around and face your guests or face the camera, which is right there in the middle if your guests are online. Please raise your hands high and clap to thank your friends and family watching you. And also to thank the faculty who helped lead you through this challenging journey and who helped make today possible for you. Please turn back around and have a seat. So we know that for adult students, it's never a solo road to get here. The guests are the ones that helped. 
Um, I too, as I went through my uh, graduate program at BC, did one course at a time. I think I am the person who took longer than any other student at BC to complete a doctorate, 11 years. Um, and my husband was there the whole time. I mean, usually supportive. Um, but overall supportive and helped give me that feeling that, okay, I can do it um, and that I deserve to do this and that it's okay to take family time away and concentrate on studies. So if your family and friends have done that for you, please thank them again after this ceremony. All right, so I am your MC, so I'm going on to our next uh, piece right now. We're gonna talk about the awards for some of the truly, truly outstanding students who have come through the graduate programs in Woods this year. I'm gonna read the list of graduates who have earned awards for their achievements and contributions. As I read your name, please stand and remain standing until all the award winners have been announced. And at that point, I'll ask for a round of applause. So the people at the beginning are gonna stand for a bit. Carrie Casey, graduating with a degree in leadership and administration, Carrie will, will receive her degree from Boston College President Leahy tomorrow during the campus-wide ceremony as a representative of all of you. Carrie's honor is given to her because she embodies scholarly excellence, inspires others through her active leadership, and has a clear vision for how she can be more in this world. Gary Kakesi? All right, Gary. Gary is graduating with a degree in cybersecurity policy and governance. Gary will be carrying the Woods College banner in the main ceremony tomorrow as an outstanding student who best represents the Woods College commitment to leadership and service. Angelo Bruno? Angelo, great. Angelo is graduating with a degree in sport administration. Angelo will be carrying the other Woods College banner in the main ceremony as an outstanding student who best represents the Woods College commitment to leadership and service. Jennifer McLarnon. Yes. No. Jennifer's graduating with a degree in cybersecurity policy and governance and is receiving the Jeremiah O'Connor Graduate Award given to a student who has demonstrated leadership and engagement with their community and professional field uh, and or through personal commitment. This individual exemplifies the Jesuit ideal of men and women for others and has lived the Jesuit vision of servant leadership through community engagement. Waleska Alves, nope, didn't make it today. Graduating with a degree in leadership and administration, uh, Waleska is receiving the George A. Morgan Graduate Award given to a graduating student who embodies post-traditional education through demonstrated excellence, personally, professionally, and academically. Post-traditional students are confronted with a broad array of challenges, and the recipient of this award has confronted these challenges while maintaining a high level of excellence. Holly Serpa, there we are. Holly's graduating with a degree in healthcare administration. Holly's being recognized as gradu a graduating student who brings together a spirit of service and leadership through initiative, academic excellence, strength of character, and a generous spirit. Holly dedicates her life to humble leadership and caring service for others. Shuan Hui Lee, also goes by Michelle. I'm sorry if I didn't quite pronounce it properly. Uh, Michelle is graduating with a degree in applied economics and is being recognized as the outstanding graduate in, in the MSAE program, bringing together spirit of service and leadership. Alexandria Bleeker, graduating with a degree in cybersecurity and governance. Alexandria is being recognized as the outstanding graduate, graduate in cybersecurity program who brings together that spirit of service and leadership. Catherine Bauer, Catherine, graduating with a degree in leadership and administration. Catherine is being recognized as the outstanding graduate in the MSLA program who brings together that spirit of service and leadership, who through initiative, academic excellence, strength of character, and a generous spirit, she dedicates her life to humble, the humble leadership and caring service of others. Lisa Walensiak, graduating with a degree in sport administration. 
Lisa is being recognized as the outstanding graduate in the Sport Administration Program who brings together the spirit of service and leadership through initiative, academic excellence, strength of character, and a generous spirit. She dedicates her life to humble leadership and caring service of others. Please, everyone, offer up a round of applause to these outstanding graduates of Woods College. Please be seated. So speaking of outstanding students, I'd now like to introduce our student speaker for this afternoon. Carrie Casey is graduating, as we know already, from the Master's in Leadership and Administration program. She's earned a specialization in executive leadership and organizational development. She also received her undergraduate degree from Boston College. She currently works as the Director of Recruiting for North America for McKinsey and Company. She'd like to offer her thanks to another BC alumni, her husband Jamie, and to her children, Tyler, Griffin, Riley, and Devon, and Devon is a future BC alum who is just completing her first year. Carrie, please come to the podium. Thank you, Dean Muncaster. And thank you to all of you for allowing me the honor of speaking in front of you today. St. Ignatius referred to the ideal Jesuit as one who lived with one foot raised, always ready to respond to emerging opportunities. So what does it really mean if we think about how this concept applies to leadership? Leaders seek opportunities, opportunities to advance, opportunities to change, and opportunities to lead. As leaders, we are seeking, we are moving forward, we are proactive, and to do this well, we need to stretch ourselves. Pursuing this degree has taught me that you can be a leader and a learner at the same time, and the value of doing this in tandem. The combination of the Jesuit principles coupled with the real-world experience of the Woods professors helps to bring out the best in leadership in every single one of us. This was exemplified in Professor Noon's Leadership and Decision-Making Ethics course, where we read Heroic Leadership by Chris Lowney. In this book, Lowney states, all leadership begins with self-leadership, and self-leadership begins with knowing oneself. First comes the foundation, goals, and values, an understanding of personal strengths and obstacles, an outlook on the world. Then comes the invigorating daily habit of refreshing and deepening self-knowledge while immersing oneself in a constantly evolving world. In order to have one foot raised, we need to be in balance. Think about it. What does it take to stand on one foot? It takes constant awareness of how you're feeling and how you're doing, constant slight adjustments and tweaks. Standing with one foot raised also means we are ready to react, to face challenges, to be agile, and to pivot. We see this now more than ever, especially in an environment where we have faced so much change with COVID and racial inequities. We have to be aware of the way in which we are doing things and what needs to change in order to make ourselves more stable and balanced. And we must heed the levers to pull as leaders and as human beings to keep things in motion in a sustainable manner. Leadership roles are something that many are tasked with, myself included, and it's an honor. However, the art of being an inspiring leader takes a lot of work and humility. Self-awareness, ingenuity, love, and heroism are the Jesuit pillars of leadership, and they provide balance in personal and professional lives. Anyone can play a leadership role, maybe some better than others. Yes, that is true. 
but it takes real work to move others so that they come along with you on the path. These four pillars of leadership serve as the foundation on our continued journeys, one foot raised at a time. As we close this chapter in our education, hopefully we all feel more prepared, prepared to be proactive, prepared to manage ourselves, prepared to pivot when needed. I am grateful to all of you for this opportunity to learn, to grow, and to be challenged. Here's to a life of balance and action. Thank you so much, Carrie. It's clear that you've uh, internalized the message of your degree program. I love the image of standing on one foot, especially notice those of us who can do it in heels, just saying. Okay, what you've been waiting for, the presentation of your diplomas. So here's how we're going to do this to make sure that everybody's safe and to make sure that everybody has their moment on the stage. Um, Marisol? This is Marisol, wave, okay. She's in charge. She will let you know by row when it's time for you to stand. You're going to be coming forward up this way, up these stairs, you're gonna come across, and there are two little footprints right there in front of the backdrop. If you stand there, that's the perfect spot for our photographer to get a great picture of you. Um, the Associate Dean Tristan Johnson will be up here. He will call your names. As you hear your name called, please come forward. You can remove your, bra your mask briefly for the photo if you wish. If you would like a picture with me, um, I can't, we can't do it unmasked, but just give me the high sign as you walk by. I'd be happy to join you if you want something more formal with uh, me included in your photo. Um, I also will not be offended if you'd rather just go and have your own photo taken. Okay, so Dr. Johnson, would you please come up and read the names of today's graduates? Real quick, congratulations. We'll start out with the graduates and Masters of Healthcare Administration. First, we have George Asante. Gabrielle Cheshiro. Jeffrey Decker, Sharina Dennis, Christina Fernandez. James Heger. Molly Kingdon. Lillian Marto. Peter Morris. Marjorie Page, Sujin Park,
Adrian Potter. Jose Javier Ramos. Layla Serino. Holly Serpa. Paige Squibb. Katrina Thompson Burnett. Sheila Venkatesh. Now we'd like to announce the, uh, the graduates from the Masters of, Appl of Science in Applied Economics. Ignacio Alberto de Armas Paez. Thomas Edelum. Alexander Eichler. Yuan Yi Gao. Rufin Liao. Shuman Luan. Justin Lynch. Thomas McNamee. Jack Nation. Joseph Nation. Yuan Peng, Chun Xian, Leonid Rampol, Kevin Spang, and Matthew Whitbread. The graduates from the Masters of Science in Cybersecurity Policy and Governance. Christopher Andrews. Christopher Burke. Gary Cacase. James Deneen, Matthew Donahue, Louis Faella, Christian Fiera Bend, Austin Hirsch, Sherman Homan. Yanis Kierjoglu, Min Le, Carmen Mercano Arashan. Donald Midor. Holly Fanouf. Carmen. 
Kevin Tomasek. Aiden Walsh. And Lawrence Whiteley. The graduates in the Masters of Science in Leadership and Administration. Carly Adams. Yasin Ado. Melissa Ayala, Seth Bai, Poonam Bali, Catherine Bauer, Pauline Branley, Carrie Casey. John Cunningham, John Curtin, Daniel D'Amico, Ryan Deckard, Victoria D'Amilo, Nicholas Phelis, Andreas Fajardo Delgado, Hanna Fleury, Jessica Gagnon, Michael Goodman. Mary Griffin, Ryan Hand, Madeline Hobbs, Peter Kirpestein, Jacob Mackey. Linda Maliphant, Richard Mapiza, Patricia McMahon, Isaac Mendez. Rigobert Noel, Japuzi Anwunka, Sekum Phillips, Trina Schmidt. Sean Shannon, Corey Stevens, Keegan Tolman, Kenneth Turbush, Kara Urbank, Wesley Woods. Le Zhang,
Pishuan Zhang. Next are the graduates in the Masters of Science in Sports Administration. Angelo Bruno. Tyler Buford. Stephen Curry. Daniel Dalton. Bradford Dillon. Margaret Fox. Grant Heller. Michael Jones. Michael Lepree. Brendan Lawler. Michael Palmer, Robert Papazian, Jillian Riley, Laura Lee Reisman. Charles Robinson, Andrew Sarazen, Nicole Sigmund, Kathleen Taylor. John Travers, Lisa Walensiak, Catherine Walter, and Samantha Yoke. Congratulations, Dean Muncaster. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Congratulations, everybody. That was great. Um, thank you to everyone for coming today, whether in person or online. We're streaming our ceremony. I want to thank also all the staff who put this ceremony together for you, particularly our own event planner extraordinaire, Marisol Gardner Reyes. Where's Marisol? Woo! So, I'm sure many of you were confused by all the directions that were coming out. We kept changing what we were doing. Imagine being responsible for planning this and having the plans change every three or four days. And she's still relatively sane and managed to pull this off for us today. Also, uh, Ben Archangeli, who also helped out this morning. That's why your names are all on your, uh, on your seats. Um, and someone who's not here, but if you meet her, you should say thank you. So our Vice President for Alumni Affairs was in charge of the whole ceremony of making sure the diplomas went and tomorrow's main ceremony. It's the first time she's ever done it and she got the pandemic one. So she's a real good sport. It's that leadership thing, being able to pivot and be flexible. 
Um, so if you ever meet the woman, tell her you admire her because she's extraordinary. So graduates, we all wish you success, health, and happiness. Please keep in touch with us. Let us know about your achievements. We'd love for you to stay involved with Woods, whether it's through our networking and alumni events, um, enrolling in another program, maybe, following us on social media, perhaps coming back to teach for us someday, um, or by telling your friends and your colleagues what a fine experience you had and encourage them to come and, and get their, earn their graduate degrees. So for one more, just a little up and down to get the blood moving, I'm going to invite all of today's graduates to stand one more time so we can honor you and your accomplishments. Rise. All right. Thank you. I mean, you've got a master's degree from one of the best universities in the entire country. That's pretty cool. And you should feel incredibly proud of yourself today. So as we end this ceremony, we are taking our special COVID approach to conclusion. Um, apart, against all tradition in all the commencement ceremonies, our guests are going to leave first. So Marisol and Ben will help direct traffic. I ask you to go out the doors and to leave the lobby and go outside uh, and prepare to welcome and congratulate your graduate outside of the building. After our guests have departed, the graduates will also file out row by row and Marisol and Ben will help. Um, but please, go through the lobby quickly, hit the restroom if you need to, and then go outside and start your celebration. Thank you so much for coming and graduates, congratulations on your outstanding achievements. Thank you. Music. <laughs>